Morning everybody, Ty Metalhead Weatherman here coming at you with a tropical update here. So amazing how things change within 24 hours, huh? Yesterday we were looking at absolutely nothing in the tropics now. We were saying goodbye to Invest 93L as it was going through Mexico, but now, and this is a bit more concerning, we're starting to see development a little bit further out towards the east. This tends to happen more as we get further along the hurricane season, but like I said, this season may be full of surprises as it's expected to be really active. And I normally would not expect development over towards this region so early, but we do have a 20% chance of development within the next seven days for this region here. The ideal point is gonna be within this strait just before we get to the Bay of Campeche towards the Yucatan. So right now, chances are low, but we do have to watch this system as we continue to go forward. And from what I've been also seeing on models, Wind shear, as we already know, is expected to weaken as we go through this pattern shift over the lower 48. And here is that low right there. You can actually see it very clearly on the ensemble, which is something that I haven't really seen recently from some of these other model runs. A couple of them have kind of popped up, but they haven't shown much in the way of continuity. But to see this on the ensembles as well as operational runs is definitely an eye opener to say the least. So we continue to go forward, you can kind of see little pocket here where the wind shear is light and as the wind shear weakens as a whole over the gulf and the caribbean it does look like we have a better chance for development if this can stay off land that's the key that's the uh, key question here how much land interaction will this low pressure end up getting before it would end up going over the the more ideal environment which i would say would be over towards the bay of campeche of course as we go beyond that point the question then becomes what else can we get to pop up over here and off to the east as well because if we can avoid this area and get into the gulf we might have something to say we might have something to talk about here something a little bit more notable i should say at least we still have obviously the first our uh, our first system over here that's literally hanging just off of the Antilles at the moment but as we continue to go forward i do expect an increase in activity been saying that for the longest though gfs and both the euro on the top right corner have been showing that in their most recent runs here if we go to our ensemble members we're looking for areas of low pressure here highlighted by a tightening of these isobars here that usually is a good indicator of a strong and healthy low pressure system developing something like this is a decent sign but the more isobars that you end up seeing around it, better. it's a better chance for that to become a much stronger system here. You can see an area of interest over here with the, the increased colors over here. So that's already one good indicator that's a mark for the storm to develop. As time goes on, though, look what happens as we look further off to the east, too, as we get towards the end of this week starting to see another little area of interest over here these are potential low pressure center areas but i'm seeing an area of potential mainly over towards the antilles once again we go back again and we take a look at the wind shear around that time it does weaken a bit so like i said there is potential for this to become a hotbed here typically in hurricane seasons from what i've seen from this area here it does look like we end up getting a lot of wind shear towards this area and development here is not very common here storms often will start to form but quickly will get sheared apart by that strong wind shear because hurricanes don't they don't operate like tornadoes essentially where tornadoes are good to have wind shear at the lower levels of the surfaces lower levels to the surface the tropics you want those ones to, if you're going to want any sort of wind shear you want it towards the higher levels of the atmosphere towards the lower levels it just ruins the storm entirely so as we continue to go forward here just look at how many low pressure centers could potentially develop here and again some of these form in those areas where over time that wind shear really starts to weaken and that's what i'm really paying extra close attention to as we go further and further out here because here's the thing, and a lot of people are realizing this more and more as we put up the videos. Once we get past this 60 degree west line, 
the only place for these systems to go is towards land. And that's really where the main concern lies right now. Are we going to get how many systems can we get within this 60 degree line? And just who can end up being affected if that ends up being the case? Best case scenario, these end up weakening over this region. Hopefully the wind shear stays strong enough to inhibit storm growth. I do think development is likely, but just how much they develop can still be limited by the amount of wind shear. We'll get into that in another video though. So we're gonna look at a couple other things before we get out of here. Of course, we're pretty much doing a whole model comparison the entire time here. We have the, uh, we've had the Euro and the European Ensemble here in the top, top right corner. We're gonna shift it to the bottom left corner here for this one. But essentially what we're looking at is for the vorticity here. We're looking at the mid levels of the atmosphere and the central point for tropical development here. And what I've been noticing is look at the energy that's starting to pop up over here towards the main development region. While I'm thinking that wind shear is going to be a huge inhibiting factor towards this region, it does seem more and more likely that we're going to start to see more and more storms begin to form a little bit further out to these. And that could be problematic for the main reason for the main concern of a lot of these. If they, like I said, if they pass that 60 degree west line could strengthen early and go towards land. The upside to this is if they do strengthen early, what often ends up happening is we'll have these little areas of high pressure here towards the central part of the Atlantic, towards the northern regions that will end up picking up on that storm as those thunderstorm tops grow taller and it'll kick them out to sea. So right now the pattern, even if we get storms to develop in this main development region here, it doesn't seem like we would see anything major happen just yet. So we get towards the middle part of July and into the back half. We'll have to wait and see what happens, but historically, usually we'll start to see high pressures like this begin to retreat off to the northeast here. And then that's where things start to get a little bit more spicy, so to speak. So last thing we'll go ahead and do is take a look at our precipitation type, try to get an idea of what we're looking at as far as moisture is concerned from these systems here. Like I said, it's kind of hard to say, considering the fact that we're looking all the way out to the middle of the world in our sense, so to speak, or the middle of the ocean. But you can see multiple low pressures starting to pop up here. You're starting to see a lot of spin with these as well. And see how this one starts to strengthen just a little bit here. I think it strengthens sufficiently enough to where this high pressure would pick up on it and pulls it off to sea at some point. We have a couple of different high pressures. There's one. It's over here towards the North Atlantic, and then there's the Bermuda High, which is almost like a blocking high sometimes for the East Coast. So what will end up happening is wind shear kicks in, tears that storm apart, and we see that get kicked out to sea. Classic July setup here. Euro's kind of showing the same thing right now. But again, this is just a reminder. If you're towards the Gulf Coast right now, it's a great time to still prepare. You don't have to rush. Supplies won't be quite as limited. So in case something big does happen, you can slowly build up on what you need. Because I do think there is a chance that down the line, there could be a bigger storm coming. We want to make sure that you are prepared here. We're not trying to encourage fear or anything of the like, but we're definitely trying to keep you on top of things. But that being said, hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, you know what to do. Smash that like button, hit that subscribe button, and also hit that share button. We are 75 subs away from a thousand. Greatly appreciate you guys. And I hope that we'll uh, hope to talk more weather with you guys real soon. Until then, take care and have an awesome rest of your day. And also stay cool because it's still very hot across the rest of the U.S.